Hello, welcome back to Crick Crack in the Cryptic, I should say. Um, now, we've had a request on the channel to have a look at this puzzle, which is a hard-rated uh, New York Times Sudoku from the 1st of December. Um, so I'm going to do it now. I'm going to use a standard technique, by which I mean if I identify exactly two positions in any 3x3 three three block that a number can go into, then I'll make little pencil marks to remind me of that. So, I mean, the most obvious example after I put in that one here, uh, and in fact, yeah, where can a 2 go in this 3x3 three three block? You can see that because we have a 2 here and a 2 here, a 2 is forced to be in one of these two positions, and the New York Times uh, app is quite useful because it allows me to do that just by pressing spacebar to change to pencil mark rotation. Um, now, where can I see we can make start? Um, I'm, my eyes are drawn to the 7 and 8 on the left hand side because I can see this 519 um, in this 3x3 three three non net is very forcing. Um, it's going to force 8s over onto the left hand side there, which is going to allow me to place pencil marked 8s at the bottom. And 7s, interestingly, we can place 7 pencil marks there, which actually give us a 7 8 pair in this bottom. 3x3 three three block. So my mind's immediately then looking at this 3. What does this 3 tell us? Um, well, not a great deal. It means there are four positions that a 3 can go into in this 3x3 three three block. But that is still enough for me to be able to enter more pencil marks because what we can say with certainty is that the 3s are locked into columns 1 and 2 in this 3x3 three three block. No idea where the, where the 3 is going to go yet, but I know it will be in either column 1 or column 2. And similarly here, again, I don't know where the 3 is going, but I do know it's in columns 1 and 2. Therefore, there can't be any more 3s in columns 1 and 2 in this puzzle, otherwise we'd have a repeated 3 in a column. So I know that the 3 in this 3x3 three three block must be in column 3. And this 3 here means that, in fact, must be in one of those two squares. So that's the next thing I would look at. Um, I'll probably take a look at this row as well, just because it's got so many numbers in it. So we're looking for 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, no, can't do anything with that. And have a look at column 8 as well. So 4, 5, 6, 9. Ah, yes, there. This number here, that's got to be a 6. Um, so let's write that in. Is that going to be useful? 4, 5, 9. Mm -hmm. Useful, but not enough. It allows me to pencil mark some ones that over there in those two squares. And I'm still looking for two. Oh, actually, no, it, it is useful. I'm looking for twos as well, and they're forced downwards. And that gives me a two pair here as well, and forces that to be a five. So that was useful. One, two here. So 378 left to place. Ah, no, I can't do anything with that. Eights now, you can see that eights interact. This eight and this eight interact on this three by three block to allow me to place eights in, oops, not there, in one of those two positions. And now with this one two pair identified, I can now state with certainty this square must be an 8 because it can't be here because of this 8. So let's write the 8 in. Ah, and that resolves that 8 there. So I'm still looking for 3 and 7 into these two spots, but I can't quite see which way around that's going to go. 8, uh, there's an 8, eight has got to be there, look. Uh, just from the positioning of the 8s we already have. Let's see anything there. This 3 is forcing a 3 into one of these two squares. You can see that interacts with these 3s here. And then we can place 3s into one of these two squares as well. Uh, let's have a look at the central row again. 3, 4, 6 left to place. Which means this has to be a 3. So that's a 3 and this is a 7. So that means this is a 7. Let's remove this 3 here. So we're left with 
four, six, I think, into these two positions. Can't resolve that yet. This has to be a four or a six. Um, ah, yes, okay. And now a classic New York Times piece of logic. Let's have a look at this three by three block. Now, the key thing to notice here, and this comes up all the time in this hard version of the New York Times puzzle, is that there is a very important implication for column four and this three by three block. Let's look at column four. We have an eight there, but we also have the numbers three, six, and four. And we don't have a three, six, and four yet in this block. But we know the three, six, and four can't go in these three squares. So in fact, we know that these three squares therefore must contain the numbers three, six, and four. And we will move the three from there and that is likely to be very powerful because even though it doesn't give us an immediate number um, we can now state with certainty that we must have five seven and nine um, down this column so let's put that in this seven here means I can eliminate the seven from this square Therefore, this square has to be a 1 or a 2. And let's see if that gives us anything extra. Well, it sort of does, doesn't it? It's not easy to see, but if we, if we remind ourselves that in row 5 here, this square has to be a 4 or a 6, all of a sudden now in the central column of the grid, we have four, two four sixes in these two squares. So this square has got to be a 3. Um, and now we've got to place the numbers 1, 2, and 5 into the open squares. And look, this square here cannot be a 1 or a 2. So this square, I think, has to be a 5. And this square is a 1 or a 2. I can also notate because it matches there, look. So 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. five. Down here, we must be looking for a 3 and 5 to place. So now those two squares are fixed, and that must be a 5. Wow. Um, this, I, I, I'm so often impressed with this New York Times puzzle. It really is a very, very good Sudoku puzzle in general. It has the feel always like it's been hand designed, that it sort of leads you along these very uh, linear logical paths, which you only tend to get with puzzles from nickly.com, really. Um, so I may ask Will Shorts where they commission these from because it wouldn't surprise me at all if they have some sort of nickly connection. A four here and four here, so I can put some marks on fours there. Look, oh hang on, look, I've got a three there now. So I don't know if I had that before, but that means that must be a three and that must be a two. Uh, so that was silly. Uh, two, two. So this must be a two now. Two, one. And two. Ones into those two positions. And four, five, six, and nine to place up here. Ah, we have a five and a nine already in the column. So we're going to have a five, nine pair into those two squares, which means this these two will have to be four, six again. Now this matches with this four six, so we've got five seven nine left to place in uh, row three. That means this must be a seven. Remove this seven. That means this is a seven. This is five or a nine here. I might notate that just to because it's such a a useful square. Um, I've got to place four five and nine. It's four, five. Ah, this is a five nine double as well. So in fact, there's only one place a four can go, and that's in that square. Four four. Four's there. There's a lot of these four six pairs dotted around everywhere. Um, let's have a look at column nine. One two four six to place. This is a four six pair as well with this one. So put that in. So this must be a five or a nine which matches with this 5 and 9, so this is a 4, 6 pair. Oh, I suppose I could have seen that from this 5, 9 here. Uh, ah, and that does resolve it. That must be this way round now because of uh, the 4 in this square. 
So now all of these four sixes are going to unwind themselves. That's going to be useful. Let's try and do it in the right order. Sixes here, so sixes in one of those two squares. This has to be the four. This change of font in the New York Times puzzle indicates that we have done all the fours now, so it's actually quite useful. Once you get used to it, I, the first time I found it, I actually found it distracting, but now I am used to it, so it's less bad. Now this is the only place a six can go in row eight, so we can write that in, which means this is a nine. Oops, nine, nine, five, five, nine. I think we're there now. We'll just finish it off though for good order. Um, so what are we looking for down here? Three and five. Which means this must be ah, so it's got to be nine, one in that order. One is forced down there. Can use this has got to be a two up here. Squares are forced to be a five, that resolves this five and three, that resolves the three and the eight, that resolves the eight and the seven. Seven, two, two, one, one, and therefore, hopefully, if everything's worked out, this is going to be a six. So, as usual with the New York Times, very nice uh, Sudoku puzzle. Um, thank you for the uh, request to solve it that we had from one of our viewers. We do enjoy this sort of thing when you point us in the direction of um, elegant puzzles um, uh, that we can we can try and solve. So keep the recommendations coming. Uh, please, if you enjoy, enjoy the content, do subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.